Well, this is what the community thinks. And they've got it all wrong. I've just returned from a months long expedition to Bird Island, calculating, collecting, and climbing. In those lost jungles, they called me the Robinson Crusoe of crows, the Tom Hanks of ganks, the Lord of the fly. But now I'm back on home soil and I'm excited to share my findings. Decidui is not bad. He's just got an insanely high skill floor and is probably one of the hardest characters in the entire game. But he's so good. So without further ado, hello, my name is Mullahu and I am going to be your host and pilot tonight on this fine midnight eve to spread the good word of the bird. My latest pioneering adventure has been this. 1,000 games of Decidui, all in ranked, peaking around 1,900 masters every season since season three. If you're tired of losing lane and coin flipping games, say hello to your new main, Decidui, the orbital death laser hyper carry assassin 1v1 me on rust jungle god. And I hope to inspire some of you to pick them up and to start crushing your games. Pokemon Unite is a weird game. Many players feel like information is hard to find and even harder to trust. Like how much damage your abilities do, what your movement speed is, and what am I doing? Wait, what do you mean? It's already 205. Oh, shit. <laughs> a good Decidui preys on this chaos by being able to be everywhere and kill everything at all times. But this ain't no lame Decidui like your old Grim Gramps used to play. No, you are a jungler, the leader of your tribe, and you've got to have a plan. That plan is to use the three M's, map awareness, movement, and murder to win the game. Decidui is a low health, medium mobility, high range, massive damage character. Your job as a Decidui pilot is to full clear your jungle blue to red, gank top at level five, and then race back into your jungle to hit level seven. This is when we'll unlock our Bomb de Plume Spirit Shackle. In my opinion, one of the best and most fun abilities in the entire game, but also one of the hardest. Spirit Shackle is a chargeable sniper-like arrow. The longer you charge, the more damage you deal, up to a ludicrous 446% multiplier of your attack stat. When you hit with at least a half-charged arrow, you also stitch your opponent to the ground, slowing them and dealing damage if they leave that little shadow hula hoop there around their feet. But of course, everybody steps out. What are they gonna do, just sit there and wait to die? Which means Decidui then can swoop on in and follow up with more damage, more slows, and the hunt is on. Now Decidui loses movement speed while charging these arrows and theoretically makes you quite vulnerable, but your screen and camera literally zoom out while you charge. And this is our first most important jungle god play pattern. Using those charging spirit shackles to widen your scope of vision. Expert use of this mechanic suddenly unlocks a very unique tool for looking while moving, keeping control of your character while you safely and suddenly strike through an entire row of spaces anywhere in a huge circle around you. And if you don't need to shoot it, you can just cancel, save your arrow charge, and then keep sneaking away. No other Pokemon in the game really gets to do anything like this, which is also why it's so important to jungle and to not lane. We need to give ourselves free reign of the map, maximizing our potential to gank and counter gank from off screen, and to cover and threaten as many squares on the board as possible. But more on that later. Our second primary ability as Decidui is Shadow Sneak, which you learn one level later at level eight. Shadow Sneak is what's referred to as a move speed steroid, suddenly increasing your movement speed by 70% for a short time. A dash, this is not, but Decidui is actually quite happy to have a mini X speed. So, so much of our damage is dealt while we are actively moving, something you can't do while you're dashing or hopping over a wall. Whether it's charging an arrow, looking for your shot, or narrowly spacing around an Absol's claws while still auto-attacking him, believe me, you will come to love Shadow Sneak. As our primary mobility tool, this build is literally useless without it. But there's a lot more to it than just movement. Shadow Sneak also summons a little tiny ghosty boy that stays wrapped around you until an enemy Pokemon comes into range. When they do, that shadow slides off and homes in on the enemy, 
This then critically reveals their position through Fog of War, even in bushes, decreases that character's movement speed by 30% for a short time, and reduces their defense by 60%, all while dealing a small but not insignificant amount of damage. There are a hundred different situations where Shadow Sneak absolutely pops off, but the fact that it's a sprint, a flashlight, and a DPS tool all in one ability is simply amazing. It's not flashy, but it's the perfect ability for our game plan. Map awareness, movement, and murder. This now forms the bread and butter flowchart for confronting our enemies. You cast Shadow Sneak, scout out the wabbits, and then bag them with Spirit Shackles. An important tip while hunting, Spirit Shackle will actually give you an audio cue for every Pokemon that you hit. It sounds like a kind of a thunk, and it will then go thunk 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 if you hit three people. Which means that shooting into bushes can actually quickly tell you if there's only one person there or the entire team. Decidueye's Unite move, Knock Knock, is an extremely powerful team fighting tool when used correctly. Decidueye roots himself in place and becomes unstoppable, which can actually, in some very narrow situations, be used to counter things like Charizard or Serena's Unite, where you can quickly unite, cancel it, right after canceling their own ability. But Knock Knock fires a stream of little arrows in any direction that you choose. The final arrow is a super spirit shackle that does bonus damage to low health targets, which is great for stealing Regis and Rayquazas from and over multiple walls. Each of your 30 little arrows will deal about 300 damage and the final shot hits for over 2000. So when you add this all up, 10,000 total damage later, and we can see why this is one of our team's most valuable ways to win objectives or push goals. Trying to position yourself in a place that will give you the option between shooting the arrows at the objective or at the enemies coming in to fight the objective, but still far enough away that you can't get picked off is an extremely important skill that you're going to learn as a jungle decidui. Finally, and arguably the most important part of our bird DPS is our auto attack what I think is the most underused element of Decidueye's entire kit. After a four hit wind up, your green little pea shooter turns into an actual P90, increasing attack speed, adding damage, and shredding everything from Zatu to Rayquaza. Coupled with our held items, muscle band, and scope lens, Decidueye's damage actually truly begins to mirror and even outclass that of Greninja, Cinderace, and Duraludon. Spacing your auto attacks and making sure to keep up that passive, especially when forcing 3v2s on goal, will be the difference between a 50k damage loss and a 100k W. Learning your limits is literally the only thing that's stopping you. Now, let's talk about our gear, because these are some of my most important secrets, the Mullahoo tech, the best bird build after playing a thousand games in what I would consider competitive environments. Behold, six brown emblems, and I play with three reds as well. Muscle Band, Scope Lens, Razor Claw, and Eject Button. Now, the six brown emblems should really come as no surprise, but you should be aiming to reach around plus 15 to 20 attack from all of your emblems together. I personally also use three red emblems, Flareon, Rapidash, and Ponita, simply to push my damage output to the absolute limit, but I urge you and anybody else that's really starting off with Decidueye from the get-go to check out the math cord actually for some super clean configurations that really try to maximize your benefits and minimize your losses. That kind of consistency will just really help you begin to learn the character in a safer environment until you want to start taking off the weights, so to speak. However, the real Krabby Patty secret formula is truly in the held items and the philosophy behind them. Muscle Band and Scope Lens topped off with the spicy cherry that is Razor Claw. Let's go over these items. Muscle Band gives us everything that we want the attack stat, combining with our emblems, and maximizing our spirit shackles. We get attack speed, which buffs our melee range combat and our jungle clear, very importantly, and a unique percentage health shred on every auto attack that we will be shooting a lot of, dealing 3% of the enemy Pokemon's remaining health every hit. I'm personally not a huge fan of these little 2% and 3% number increases in Unite, but when we're talking about 3% of a Snorlax's 10,000 health, now 300 bonus damage per auto attack sounds quite good. This also applies to those huge health bosses like Rayquaza and the Regis, which means that you absolutely melt objectives, even by yourself. Muscle Band is, in my opinion, the first item that you absolutely need, and you should upgrade this item first. Scope Lens is a sleeper pick that, despite having no attack stat, 
translates into massive, massive power. Now, Scope Lens grants you the most crit that you can get from a single item or emblem set in the game, 6%, and it adds a 12% damage increase onto our crits, which will be reaching over 1,000 damage quite regularly, and it adds a burst of damage equal to 75% of your attack when you crit. So this really empowers our early fighting, but it scales perfectly well later on too. At level five, Dartrix gets 15% crit for free, and then we fly up to 30% bonus crit at level nine, which is the large majority of the game you play post level nine. Now, all of a sudden, every other auto is critting and triggering the 75% of our roughly 300 attack, which adds up to around 200 damage every other second. Together with Muscle Band, Scope Lens really forms the foundation of this machine gun bird, adding a fire proc damage onto almost every auto attack that we send out. But we save the best for last. The held item that really nobody is using is Razor Claw. Every copy pasta build that you'll see has attack weight in the spot, but I think that that strategy is a meme and a complete bait that will honestly just hamstring your development as a player. Decidueye is so strong that we don't need to troll every other game just to one-shot montage a level seven Greninja for TikTok. Instead of throwing in lane and dying on cooldown, we are going to convert consistent stats and three on-hit damage bonuses into dubs. As a jungler, instead of a laner, you'll learn to prioritize farming and making plays over getting greedy on goal. If you're doing this right, you should literally be too busy to die. So what does Razor Claw do for us? Well, the claw gives us flat attack, just like the baseline of attack weight, but also an additional 2% crit, which combines with our scope lens bonuses to surpass 40% crit now, and a third on hit damage burst, this time only for 50% of our attack after we use an ability. But managing this item allows you to speed up your jungle clear to a pretty significant degree, and it really lets you take some extremely calculated 1v1s against other particularly squishy characters or mid-range kind of health characters where you know your strengths and your opponent doesn't. Spirit Shackle Decidueye is all about quickly and scarily changing the game state on our opponents. And your items now compile an enormous amount of damage into the first few seconds of any fight, whether at short or long range. Now, some of you might be wondering where the new held item Rapid Fire Scarf fits into the equation for Decidueye's items. The current set that I've outlined for you in this video has so much synergy in dealing these additional sources of damage that it feels hard to give any of those up when we want to be aggressively changing the game state in positive ways that squeeze our opponent as quickly as possible. In my opinion, we aren't going to be looking for something like an additional attack speed source. We're just looking for raw damage in order to win these fights and quickly take advantage of opportunities. The final jewel on the crown of our gear is Eject Button. X speed is traditionally on people's minds, and though it does have good synergy with Shadow Sneak, Flash is simply necessary if you want to approach the maximum limit of this character. Suddenly shifting a square over in the middle of your chessboard fight is backbreaking. You can chase people down, you can dodge key abilities, you can make crazy plays, and more importantly, when your opponent knows you don't have flash, their playbook opens up wide. Decidueye is all about closing that book and constricting our opponent's options. You gotta be clean with it, but since we are squishy and complicated, Decidueye loves this high skill cap battle item. Not only do we already have a mini X speed built into our Shadow Sneak, but Decidueye is about understanding and taking advantage of those squares on the map that I've kind of referred to. When you really think about it, you can just simply overlay a grid onto Thea Sky Ruins and realize that when your character is standing in a certain spot on that grid, they can interact with a certain number of spaces around them. Decidueye basically gets to claim one of the widest ranges of squares around his character in the entire game. We can reach and damage so many squares at basically any given moment. Your job as the jungle bird is to space around these walls and corners and bushes and squares and jungle camps in order to crank out damage and, importantly, survive so that you can keep doing more damage. 
Remember, map awareness, movement, and murder. Tons of characters in Unite have dives and dashes and skill shots that you need to respect at a given moment's notice. Good players will force you to act or die as soon as you step onto certain squares. X-Speed is simply too slow to let you safely stand in a lot of the places that you want to be able to, and unless you plan on playing scared the entire game, you'll need eject button to make this dream a reality. But that's the whole point of this build, this whole character in my opinion. In that fighting game way, our damage and our vision control are quite literally some of the best in the game. But they're just so hard to play, requiring practice and a constant awareness of the game state to avoid accidentally stepping into that wrong square and just suddenly dying. Flash gives you that autonomy and reactivity that you need to throw down against whatever your opponents might throw at you. As you learn your enemies' ranges, their timings, their damage outputs, and their cooldowns, Eject Button will let you overcome all of them. An invincible instant speed blink lets you escape or finish a ludicrous amount of positions on our chessboard map before your opponents can even know what happened. For example, say you're scrapping with a Gengar. You saw him coming up from the jungle, so you were ready, and you flashed his Shadow Ball on reaction. Now we turn it on to him. Use Shadow Sneak forward for a speed up, defense shred, and applying a Razor Claw onto our auto attack. We auto attack him, and we tap cast a Spirit Shackle, and auto him again for another Razor Claw hit. This split second interaction becomes a huge amount of damage once you add everything up. At level nine, Shadow Sneak will hit for 250, your auto attack will hit for 300, your Muscle Band will proc for 150, your Razor Claw will add another 150, and if we crit, Scope Lens would add another 225 and another 12% damage. Then, Tap Spirit Shackle will hit for 1000, another auto attack for 300, another Muscle Bland proc for 150, and another Razor Claw hit for 150. A 2500 damage combo without crits in 2 seconds, while the Gengar is stranded without a way out. Your fighting game flowchart will continue on from there in a number of ways, depending on if the Gengar then flashes on you, or you have a teammate or your opponent's teammate shows up. But this is your role as Jungle Decidui, dictating when and how these flowcharts begin and to follow them through. Thanks to this symmetry in our items and our playstyle, this build starts to mimic what it's like to take the other Decidui ability, Razor Leaf. Temporary, powerful, short-range combat. Except we keep all of the completely broken upsides of Spirit Shackle. This build aims for consistently commanding the game and driving it towards a victory, not high rolling stacks for a highlight video. The fact that this puts up 30% of my quote unquote high elo team's damage without attack weight is, in my opinion, purely a testament to this strategy. Don't forget your mission. Use map awareness to check which squares are safe or under fire. Use your movement to reach or flee those places, and use murder to turn the tide. Decidui is a shark among fishes, a wolf among wabbits. With a ceiling to the sky, I highly recommend this character to those interested in the challenge. I hope I've convinced some of you into joining the Ghost Grass dark side, because a thousand games later, I'm still having a blast, and I can't wait to see what these future metagames might bring. I truly feel like Decidui is equipped to handle all of them, but please, as you learn this character and continue in your exploration with me, come back and comment below this video with any questions you ever have about the bird, their matchups, their rotations, and I will do my best to answer them. But that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of a character, and until next time, I'll catch you in the jungle. Peace.